everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Alex and today I am bringing you another edition of If you liked this book, then you might like this book. So I think I've only done this video one other time on my channel. I will link it in a card up above if you have not seen it. It's been a while. But I have compiled another collection of books that I think kind of go hand in hand. If you enjoyed one book, you might enjoy the other one. This can also work in reverse. So if you enjoyed the second book, you might enjoy the first book. Or if you did not enjoy one of the books, then maybe stay away from the other one. You can take this recommendation video pretty much however you want to, but we're gonna go ahead and get into the books. But before we get into today's video, if you're new here and you're not already, be sure to go down and hit the subscribe button as well as the bell icon down below so that you never miss out on any of my content. And without further ado, let's get started. So first, if you enjoyed Second Chance Summer by Morgan Matson, I think you will also like The Summer I Turned Pretty by Jenny Han. Now, these two books obviously have something in common in that they are set in the summertime, and we follow our two main characters as they go to their beach houses that they stay at throughout the summer. Now, Second Chance Summer has a much darker undertone. In Second Chance Summer, our main character, Taylor, her father has gotten some pretty devastating news and it seems that this might be the last summer that they wind up spending together in the beach house. So they are trying to make the most of it and there's a really big family aspect in this novel with some romance thrown in there as well. Whereas in The Summer I Turn Pretty, we follow our main character, Belly, who is going to this summer beach house and this story focuses more on the romance that she's starting to develop with a boy that lives next door to them. They've known each other for forever, starting to see each other in a little bit of a different light. So The Summer I Turn Pretty is definitely a little bit younger on the YA side and it is more lighthearted and upbeat and cheery, whereas Second Chance Summer has a little bit more darker element. But if you do enjoy that classic heading to the beach house for the summer and getting into some shenanigans, both of these are really good picks. Next, if you enjoyed Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds, I think that you will also like This Is Where It Ends by Marika Nijkamp. Now these two books seem quite different from each other on the surface, but I thought that they gave me the same kind of vibe. So that's why I wound up putting them together, but they are actually quite different. Now in Long Way Down, we follow our main character, Will, who towards the beginning of the novel, his brother is shot and killed. So now Will is on his way to kill the person that killed his brother. So the whole story actually takes place when Will gets on an elevator and is going down to try to get to the person that killed his brother. And the elevator winds up stopping on every floor and a new person from Will's life gets in. They have an exchange and it kind of changes his perspective. And it was a very, very powerful story. This one is told in verse and it goes by really, really quickly. But the fact that it does have to do with a shooting and that it takes place in such a short period of time is what made me relate it to This Is Where It Ends. Now, This Is Where It Ends is not written in verse, it's written in prose, but it follows a school shooting. So this book is told in 54 minutes and you get little increments of everything that's going on while this school shooting is happening. Very, very detailed down to the minute and very, very impactful. So that's kind of where the similarities come in here. Like I said, we're dealing with a shooting in a very short amount of time. I think that both of these authors did a really nice job of really deep character studies in such a short period of time. They're both incredibly impactful. So if you've read one and you're looking for that again with the little social commentary and some darker elements. Definite trigger warnings in here, but both of them are very, very solid. Next, if you enjoyed All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover, I think that you will also like After I Do by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Now, the main similarities between these two novels is that they follow married couples. I feel like in a lot of literature, we either hear about teen romance or maybe college age, new adult romance that are getting together, but we don't really get to see couples after they are married, which is part of what relates these two novels. So in All Your Perfects, we follow our main characters, Quinn and and Graham and one of the big struggles in this novel is infertility. So they have been trying to have a baby and have not been successful and that has really been taking a toll on their marriage. If I remember correctly, I believe that we get a now and then perspective leading back further in their relationship and then where they are now. So that is the focus of this novel. Uh, Colleen Hoover is just wonderful at everything she does and I feel like she handled their marriage and the topic of infertility really, really well. And then in After I Do, we follow our two main characters, Lauren and Ryan, and they have been married for a number of years now and they are losing that spark. They find that they really are not in love like they used to be. And they decide to take kind of a trial separation where they move apart from each other. They don't talk to each other for an entire year. And at the end of that year, they're going to come back together and decide if they do still want to be married towards the end of it. So in this book, we do follow mainly Lauren. We do obviously hear from Ryan in there as well, but the focus is mainly on Lauren. Whereas in All Your Perfects, again, there's a little bit of a skew towards our female main character, but we do get more of an even balance, I feel. In After I Do, we aren't dealing with infertility or anything like that, but it is showing the breakdown of a marriage. 
marriage and how these people are functioning with and without each other on their own and together. So if you're looking for a really solid marriage story, both of these are good options. So next, if you enjoyed If We Are Villains by M.L. Rio, I think you will also like Middle Game by Seanan McGuire. These two books might seem very, very different on the surface, but they just kind of gave me the same vibe. I don't really know how to describe it, but I just kind of placed them together in my head. But in If We Were Villains, we follow our main character, Oliver, who at the beginning of the novel is getting out of jail. He's been in jail for 10 years for this crime that he may or may not have committed. And once he gets out of jail, the detective that put him in comes to him and says, I want to know the real story. Tell me what actually happened all those years ago. So then we get to go back in time with Oliver during his college days. He was a part of the Shakespeare troupe and we get to figure out what actually happened on that fateful night all those years ago. Whereas in Middle Game, we follow our two main characters, twins Roger and Dodger. And this one, I like to keep a little bit more of the plot hidden. But I will just say one of our twins is very talented with words and language. The other twin is very talented with numbers and the more analytical side of things. And the line in the synopsis here that really describes this book says, Godhood is attainable, pray it isn't attained. So these books are honestly completely different. If We Were Villains has more of a contemporary mystery, dark kind of tone, whereas Middle Game falls more into the sci-fi category. But they did definitely remind me of each other just because we get to know our main characters so well. They're both very dark and they're both have such a signature writing style that just propels you through the story and it, they were both phenomenal. So they're not as closely related as some of the other pairings on this list but especially if you're looking to break into a different genre and you've enjoyed one of these maybe try the other one. Next if you enjoyed A Man Called Uwe by Frederick Bachman I think that you will also like The Story Life of A.J. Fickery by Gabrielle Zevin. Now these two books reminded me of each other because we have a very deep character study into one older man. So in A Man Called Uwe, we follow our main character Uwe who is a widower and he lives by himself. He's very very particular about how he likes his life. He's what I like to call a beloved curmudgeon and one day this family moves in next door, a couple and their two young kids and they turn Uwe's life upside down, open him up to some new possibilities and kind of bring him out of his funk. And in the storied life of A.J. Fickery, we follow our main character A.J. Fickery who is also a widower and he owns this bookshop on this island. It has been struggling for some time and now his prized possession has been stolen. All seems to be lost and then one day this young girl is abandoned in his bookshop and he has to take care of her and he becomes responsible for her. So both of these novels follow men who are really really set in their ways. They have their own look about the world and they are transformed throughout the course of the novel. I absolutely love both of these. A Man Called Uwe is my favorite thing from Frederick Rockman's today. And the story life of AJ Fickery will probably be on my favorites of 2020 list. I just adore both of them. They have a perfect combination of heartwarming and heartbreaking. So I know a ton of people have already read Uwe, but I don't feel like quite as many people have read about AJ Fickery. I feel like AJ Fickery is the perfect combination of the feeling of a man called Uwe and a love letter to book lovers. So if you're looking for something like that in your life, don't underestimate AJ Fickery. It's such a good one. Both of these are phenomenal. Some of my favorites. And for my last pairing, if you enjoyed Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston, I think that you will also so like Yes, No, Maybe So by Becky Albertalli and Aisha Saeed. Now, both of these novels, what they have in common is the romance aspect and the political aspect. So in Red, White, and Royal Blue, we follow our main character, Alex, who is the first son of the United States. And he has had this beef with Prince Henry, who is the Crown Prince of Wales. And Alex's mother is up for re-election this year. She really doesn't think that it looks good on her re-election campaign if Alex and Henry are enemies. So they are thrust together to become friends and they wind up becoming something more. And in Yes, No, Maybe So, our two main characters, Jamie and Maya, actually meet while they are political canvassing for the same state Senate candidate. So there is a definitely political charged aspect in here and then they just wind up falling in love in the process. So you can definitely see the similarities between these two. I will also say there's a lot of diversity in both of these novels. So in Red, White, and Royal Blue, Henry is gay and Alex I believe is bisexual. Then Alex's family is Latino so we have diversity over here. And then in Yes, No, Maybe So, Jamie, our male main character, is Jewish and Maya is Muslim. So we have a diversity over there as well. A couple of our big differences is in Red, White, and Royal Blue we are following a male-male romance whereas in Yes, No, Maybe So we're following a male-female romance. And the other big difference here is that I would classify Red, White, and Royal Blue as new adult and Yes, No, Maybe So is definitely 
YA. So in red, white, and royal blue, there is some more mature content. There are some sexual scenes in there. So if you are looking for something that is a little bit more on the adult side, that one might be good to go with. But if you are looking to recommend a book to a younger reader, or you just don't want to read about that, maybe go with yes, no, maybe so, because it is a little bit more on the tamer side. But that is it for my book recommendations today. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and give me a pairing for one of the books that I mentioned. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to go down and give it a big thumbs up as well as hitting the subscribe button and the bell icon down below so that you never miss out on any of my content. So until next time, bye!